Welcome to Coros Flow. In this video, we'll show you how to create a new flow using entities. An entity is a container you can use to group similarly themed items. Entities provide a lot more possibilities and flexibility for your chatbot. The entity food, for example, might include multiple food types, like a hamburger or a pizza, but they are both foods, which is why we include them in the same entity, but with different keywords for that entity list. Let's use this new food entity in a flow where the user can order food. You can respond with the value of a parameter or entity by typing its name between double curly brackets. By default, this uses the keyword of the entity when the user has typed one of its synonyms. If the parameter doesn't have a value yet, your text reply will be empty. That's why you need to make sure you give a value to the parameter before you use it in your bot replies. If you click on an intent that contains entities, you can choose whether entities that are part of an intent are required or optional. This creates a text reply, which is automatically sent if this intent gets matched without giving the food parameter a value. Let's save the copy of the question and test our flow again. When someone now responds with just a burger, the bot might still not understand it because we don't have training examples with a similar structure. Let's add some more short examples with the entity and try again. If you want to respond with the synonym instead of the keyword of the entity, you can add dot .match so you would have food.match instead of food. You can also use conditions to do basically the same check for entities, but conditions also allow you to be a bit more flexible for specific use cases. So for this example, let's delete what we just made and use conditions instead. This flow is great for explaining another powerful tool for extracting user input, the AnyText trigger. Drag in the AnyText from your triggers section to the branch where the parameter doesn't have a value yet. The name you give this AnyText will be the name of the parameter that it stores the captured user input to, so let's call it food as well. You also have the option to select what type of text the any text should capture. By default, this will be set on any text, which means it will capture the entire text message the user sends, no matter what text that message contains. That's great for gathering an entire sentence like feedback or open input like a name, but in this case, we only need to extract the food entity. Now, the bot will extract a value for the food entity when it's included in the message from the user. Since we made sure to capture the value for the food entity in both branches, we can now safely use the parameter in our replies underneath both of them. In the next video, we'll see how to use event triggers and replies to optimize your flows.